Welcome to the Tom Grubber Show. Pat O'Melia here. Are you there? That's why I do the show, because you're there. We try to entertain. We try to educate you, maybe inform you a little bit. Uh, I might not be on Saturdays at 10 and 2 o'clock anymore. You'll know <laughs> before, before the show normally ends. Anyway, uh, we're in the process of negotiating with Comcast, and they're raising their rates, even though they lost 25% of their subscribers, when people are cutting the cords. And their rates are going up. But yet the subscribers have gone down. So I'm not going to pay more than I should be. And hopefully Comcast sees that. And they don't try to, uh, you know, push these rate hikes in, uh, whether it's on the, the airtime rentals or equipment. Um, so if you're looking for the show and you don't see it on Saturday at 10 and 2 p.m., you realize that Comcast and I didn't come to an agreement. Now, I told Comcast... If we can't come to an agreement, I'm going to remove a lot of my shows off the network. And we'll see what happens there. Uh, they want to lose a considerable sum of money. That's up to Comcast. But when your subscriber base is going down as low as they have, because the people are cutting, you know, cutting the cord. Yeah, they're going to Hulu, they're going to Netflix, uh, Disney, uh, HBO, Max. Um, and like with the Hulu, and on uh, Netflix... You can get some substations. You can get TLC. You get uh, Home and Garden. You can get you know whatever channels you're looking for. You know Disney. You got a uh, History Channel. ESPN. There, there's a lot going on. Um, don't forget everything on the bottom of the screen. I always keep forgetting that. Like us on uh, Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget live stream slash Vimeo, our base uh, streaming network. That's where we archive all our shows, and there's a lot of other programming also, and the app is free to download, so download that, and you can watch everything we have. You got the Shore Show coming up pretty soon. We'll start uh, filming that on the boardwalk. Um, hopefully, we'll have it on Comcast. We'll see how that goes. Uh, next week is the primary, Tuesday, to be precise. We'll talk about that in the body of the show today, and summer is here. Memorial Day weekend was pretty successful down on the Barrier Islands and Seaside Heights in particular. Um, I was here over the weekend. Saturday, the weather was pretty bad. Um, Sunday was okay. Monday was good. Too bad Tuesday's weather wasn't the uh, weather that we had in Seaside Heights. I was filming a pool complex in North Bergen that Mayor Nicholas Sacco had built. Beautiful pool complex. It was 95 degrees. and I'm filming by the, uh, the water, you know, the pools, and the Sun reflecting it. Who that was hot. All right, I'm going to break the commercial. You're watching the Tom River Show. I'll be right back. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. We're back. Pat O'Malley here. Tom Rubin Show. You there? Uh, like I said, Tuesday is the primary. Uh, the 7th, make sure you vote. I know it's a primary, and it's like, ah, it's primary. But this is an important primary. And the primary is where you get to choose who's going to be on that November ballot, and that's important. Well, you want the best possible candidates to vote for. And I'm going to endorse two candidates because I believe we need new vision. We need new blood. We need some youth on the commissioner board. And right now, you don't have any of that. What I'm asking you to do on June the 7th is to vote for Ashley Lamb and Sergio Fossa. Why? Well, like I said, I just laid it out. We need new blood new vision, new ideas, youth on the commissioner board. You know, it, 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 and it's just time for Jenny Hayes to go. You know, Jenny Haynes, she's drunk with power there the, the last uh, six months or so. Um, it, it, again, she's another one along in the tooth. Jack Kelly, I really don't have a problem with Jack Kelly. He's made some um, questionable decisions over his years as a commissioner, but he's managed to weather all those questionable decisions. Uh, I think Jack, I think Kelly actually wants to do a good job, 
But the thing is, again, he's been there forever. Everybody has been there forever on the commissioner board. And when it, when it gets to, to Jenny Haynes, and I'm really zeroing in on Jenny Haynes. Um, she has, like, no respect for county employees. That was obvious with the, uh, the call block situation that just occurred where they were trying to bum rush this guy out uh, so they can hire um, a friend to become the uh, assistant BA and you move up uh, Fury to be the BA. Um, complete lack of respect for your, your fellow county employees. And really, you got to respect for the people that work under you. Um, fellow commissioners, you just seen recently with the reorganization just how little respect Jenny Haynes had for her fellow um, commissioners. Again, drunk with power. And, and my problem here is Jack Kelly, he should have stood up for his other commissioners, but that didn't help. He allowed himself to uh, uh, be disrespected, but he had some family issues going on, so there may be um, an excuse for what happened with Jack Kelly there with Jenny Haynes. My opinion, Jenny Haynes had zero respect for county policy. There is a reason why there is an FBI investigation going on in Ocean County over hiring practices, pay scales, uh, raises, all that kind of nonsense because somebody isn't following county policy. Somebody has zero respect for how the county government should be run. Um, they have the truth issue. Um, and it's just been a series of embarrassments like uh, the resume for the guy that's going to be uh, the assistant B, allegedly. Um, they were pushing this guy to become the assistant BA. Um, nobody knew, oh, we don't have ever spoke to this guy. Nobody ever knew about him. Turns out, you know, um, there were Jenny Haynes was texting uh, the resumes to uh, fellow commissioners. So there's, some, there's a lot of questionable uh, stuff issues with Jenny Haynes and, to a degree, Jack Kelly. You know, like I said, Kelly's had his missteps over the years, but he's uh, survived that. Other thing you want to look into is the average age of the commissioners in Ocean County. They all got to be, like, in their 70s and the mid-70s. They've been there forever. You know, they, even the newest one, uh, Bobby Joe, what is she, 74 years old? And somebody is out there dumb on the pulse of the uh, community there. Lamb and Fossa are a lot younger. I mean, a lot younger. Uh, they're, they're, you know, Lamb is somewhere uh, in the 30s, I think. Uh, far cry from like 74 years old. And this is what you need. You just can't continue with a group of old white people. You've got to have some diversity in there, some youth, you know, a real representation of Ocean County, the residents of Ocean County, and you don't have that. And one of the problems is you guys keep voting the same way. You've got to sit back and make an educated vote. Are you happy with how the Ocean County um, Board of Commissioners are conducting their business and conducting the business of Ocean County? I doubt if you are. Uh, for that matter, yeah, we probably won't get this done in our lifetime. But there's something we should probably consider when it comes to commissioners, term limits. How many terms can you serve as a commissioner? Now, everybody has the right to vote and everybody has the right for run for election, but we do have term limits. You know, you have two, only two terms as a governor, or two terms as a president. Um, when it comes to the commissioner board, probably could put some term limits in there so these people just don't serve on and on and on. Um, you know, and you, you look at... The, the commission is here, and you look at the advanced age of some of them and the amount of time they've been in office as a commissioner slash freeholder in the old days, that may have played a role, again, in the more embarrassment for Ocean County. Besides the FBI in vac vacation, uh, investigation, you have the former mayor of Ocean Gate. Remember that guy? The guy who was stealing the... The parking meter quarters, he was selling furniture on eBay and all. Uh, he was no longer the uh, mayor of, of Ocean County. But guess what? He was a county employee. I wonder, wonder what the payroll records show with that, his time cards. Hmm, bet there probably weren't any. Uh, these are one of the things I'm sure this happened after the FBI inves investigation began. 
chances are, if you had some youth, they might have found out what was going on because this former mayor of Ocean Gate was also a county employee, supposedly a carpenter. Uh, and somehow he managed to get his fellow workers, mind you, this Ocean County mayor is not a supervisor at all with the county of Ocean. But somehow he was able to get fellow county employees to work on his personal home in Ocean Gate while on your taxpayer dime. And this just went by everybody. Ooh, I didn't know. Who knew about this? First off, how the hell does this guy get a job here? And as you've seen recently with these, uh, the, the hiring sheet they call that, how did some of these people get their job from political associations? Uh, obviously, he had some pull, but if you had commissioners that were on like 74 years old, maybe they would be at the DPW site. Maybe they would stop by and talk to the employees if they had legs to do it. That's how this occurred. Now, you get some young blood on there, like Lam Lafasa, and this possibly doesn't happen. But this happened on your time. And you haven't gotten a decent uh, explanation for this on how this all occurred. All you have is the embarrassment. All right, we're going to break the commercial. You're watching the Tom's River Show. I'll be right back. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights. Your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants. All major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. You know, another thing, after we finished this commissioner election in Ocean County, I spoke with this before, maybe we should get a county exec. See, what happens right now with the board of uh, commissioners in Ocean County, each year somebody's the director. So they're like the boss of the commissioners. And I'm the boss of the county. I'm the director this year. You're the director next year. You're the director this year. And we just rotate around. It's hard to have any long-range plans when every year you got a new head of the organization. Um, Ocean County should have a county exec. You have the county of that, and you have the commissioner boards, checks and balances. Again, if you had an actual Ocean County leader, in the case of a county of Zec, maybe the Ocean Gate mayor isn't taking county employees to his house and doing roofing or painting or whatever the hell it is. Uh, over at Hudson County, where most of us are from here in Tom's River, uh, either you have a direct connection to Jersey City or Hudson County or your family did, you have the county of that Thomas DeGees. Tommy's been, he's about to retire. I, I don't think he's seeking re-election. Tom had long-range plans. And he's got to see them all from soccer stadiums in uh, Hudson to, uh, in Harrison, um, to getting out of rental properties. Before Tom became county of Zach, the county had offices and all these rental buildings and, you know, God knows who owned the buildings. The county was writing rent checks, your taxpayer dollars, well, Hudson County taxpayer dollars, but leaving. One of the first things the G's did was get in and get out of rental properties. Either Tom was buying the properties or he was going to build the properties. And what Tommy the G's did, you got that county plaza that was uh, the old block drug, the freeholder building on Pavonia that was owned by Panapento Properties. It's now owned by the county of Hudson. 830 Bergen Avenue, that was um, Provident Bank. Hudson County bought it. They got office space there for their employees, and on and on. Uh, Tom DeGees put in a, a golf course, uh, police academy. All these things happen. And I'm, and I'm really just touching the surface on what Tom DeGees accomplished as county exec. And uh, the, the, I almost forgot the Garini Center. The Garini Justice Center, a huge court uh, complex that would make Avengers headquarters blush. All this happened under the guidance of Tom DeGees and the freeholder slash commissioner board. But Tom was there to make sure these things happened. There was no rotation of leadership. Yeah, but county is that, and that worked. And a good example is Hudson County. Bad example is Ocean County, where the commissioners rotate uh, the, the director of the the commission is on the big boss of Ocean County now. That's got to stop. 
So after this election, that's something we should look into. But like I said, we need new blood. We need fresh eyes. Uh, we need fresh views for the commissioner board. And you're not going to get that when everybody's in their mid-70s on the commissioner board. Um, right? Don't vote the line. Study the candidates. Look at each one. Look at, you know, what's what Kelly and Jenny Haynes have accomplished. Uh, look at the platforms for Ashley um, Lamb and Sergio Fossa. But really, keep in mind, time to get younger. If you ask senior citizens in Ocean County, would you rather have some mid-70s people on a commission board or you want some youth to be served? It's time for youth to be served. Just can't keep sending these old timers there. Look at the candidates, check their websites, understand their platforms, um, make your vote really count. And I know it's a primary, but if you want good choices in November, you got to make good choices now. And I'm asking you to vote Lamb and Fossa. And just like I said, don't blindly just vote the party line. Don't just press the button for the party line. Make an educated decision. And again, Get some new blood, get some new vision, get some fresh legs up there, and let's stop the embarrassment, which is going to be piled on after these investigations. And it'll be interesting to find out exactly how the former mayor, Ocean Gate, managed to get county employees to go work on his house. He had no authority. How did, how did he get all these employees to commit fraud because they weren't writing down on their uh, sheets or telling their supervisor, I'm working on uh, the mayor's house in Ocean Gate. So there's a lot of people who are going to be in trouble when this all comes. Uh, you got for November, uh, November, January 7th, you got the early voting. It's happening right now, right after the show here. Saturday, early voting until 8 o'clock. Sunday, early voting until 6 p.m. in Ocean County. If you are going to vote by mail, that has to be postmarked by June 7th. If you're going to drop it off in a, your ballot in a drop box, has to be there on June the 7th. And one of the things that before we get into, you know, I'm going to lighten it up when we get the quick hits. Uh, there is a challenge to the party line ballots. You know, the column A, column B. And somehow, no matter what part of New Jersey, uh, the ruling party normally gets a pretty good spot, either A or B. Um, a federal judge has ruled uh, this week that a lawsuit declaring the organizational line to be unconstitutional. And you know what? It probably, I'm not a legal scholar, of course, but it probably is. So the judge has ruled that this lawsuit can go forward. And, you know, it's going to take probably three or four years to work its way through the court. And I'm sure... Every county clerk is going to fight this at every step. So it'll probably take two, three, maybe four years. But, you know, it's almost certainty that the, um, the organizationals, uh, the local organization, the county organization, whatever it is, whether it's the uh, Ocean County GOP or the Ocean County Democratic Organization or wherever in the state of New Jersey, in case of Hudson County, the HCDO, um, we're probably going to say bye-bye to column A. You know, there's, but broke column A. That's, we're probably saying bye-bye to that. Why we're at it, and it would probably behoove the organizations to come up with an alternative to the status quo we have now, and it's been this way forever. Probably wouldn't hurt if these organizations came up with another way of handling the ballots, and it wouldn't hurt if we could take money out of the campaign, if we can cap the amount of money that can be spent on a campaign, and we can come up with some basis on uh, registered voters and what type of an election it is and you know, the, the range that the campaign has to reach. Because when you're looking at some of these things, like you know, some of the con congressional seats that are up, yeah, you're talking people with $20 million in their account for this campaign. Isn't there something better we can do with $20 million instead of put it on, you know, signs to be stuck on every telephone pole in uh, town? There's got to be there's got to be a reason why I'm going to spend $20 million for a congressional seat. And that's like every two years, so that's a ton of money. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching the Tom's Ribbon Show. I'll be right back. 
Jersey City Ford, certified parts and service located at Route 440 and Communipaw Ave is your number one source for Ford and Lincoln automotive needs. We use certified Ford Motocraft products to keep your Ford running in top shape. Motocraft parts are backed with the Ford warranty, which includes a two-year unlimited mileage guarantee. Our team will have the right Motocraft part to ensure the best performance from your Ford or Lincoln. You can order in person at the parts counter or online. Let us help keep your Ford or Lincoln in the best shape at Stevens Jersey City Ford. We're back, Town River Show. You got my coffee. Quick hits. Quick hits is when we jump around with various topics. I'm going to probably stay in the world of retail here. But actually, we'll start with Ortley Beach, so then we'll get into the world of retail. Orley Beach, Tom's River has just announced another $200,000, is it, in repairs to Ortley Beach. No matter what severity of a storm that rolls by the barrier islands, Ortley Beach gets beat up. And the sand, is, the sand and structures get damaged. For the most part, the sand gets taken away. Mother Nature takes it, and somewhere along the line, it usually puts it back. Uh, that's not happening right now in Orly Beach. And it, it's really unique to Orly Beach because, you know, there's the rest of the Barrier Islands. You know, you got Seaside Park, you got, you know, uh, Seaside Heights, uh, Lava Let, and so forth and so on. And their beaches don't seem to get beat up on a regular basis like Orly Beach. No matter, like I said, no matter what severity, we're not talking a Sandy Storm here. We're not talking Irene. You know, whatever storm blows by the Barrier Island, it, it, it has it in for Orly Beach. It, it's going to put its attention on Ortley Beach and take all its in and whatever structures. You can't keep putting hundreds of thousands of dollars in Ortley Beach every year. In the last 12 calendar months, you know, Tons River's probably dropped around 800, maybe more, $800,000, maybe closer to a million in replenishing Ortley Beach and doing repairs caused by these storms. You know, there's an old saying, you can't, you know, Mother Nature, she's tough. You can't beat Mother Nature. You could try to slow her up a little bit, but you can't beat her. As far as the sand, I don't know what you can do. Again, I'm not Army Corps engineer. You, you put some barriers out in the water. But if you're doing anything structurally, any kind of handrails or buildings or whatever, walkways, they've got to be designed to withstand some sort of a storm. You know, it's hard to design anything that's going to withstand a sandy. But, you know, and Irene, yeah, we probably could come up with something. Or any other tropical or nor'easter that blows through here because it just beats up Ortley Beach. Well, we can't put any more money in there unless there's some guarantee that it can withstand structure-wise. Sand, I don't know what you can do there. It's Mother Nature. She's tough. AutoZone. There's a new AutoZone on Fisher Boulevard, just past ShopRite. And I'll be talking about ShopRite also. When I'm in Seaside, the kids have a, a rental unit down here, and it has a two-car garage. So I kind of built like a wood shop in there uh, for most of the renovations that were done on the house in Seaside came out of that garage with all my tools. And I rotate my cars out of there. I'll bring two cars down. I'll take two cars back to Jersey City, and I can do work on them in Seaside because you got the garage and all my tools are down there. And... I kind of try to do as much repairs as I can. For that matter, when I leave here, after this taping, I'm going to Downs Ford. And I'm going to pick up a hose for an uh, EVAP valve on my 2007 Lincoln. And hopefully that'll cure the problem of the car stalling out because the hose that's there now is collapsing once the car gets up to operating temperature. I've done everything possible to figure out what the problem is with this car. But I'll try to do whatever repairs I can. And I'll go to AutoZone a lot, and I'll pick up those parts. Uh, if I can't do it, I'll have Chris at CNC uh, over by Clinton Avenue off uh, Route 37 or my guys at Goyea in Jersey City. But Goyea is going into new management. Uh, Emil and Mario, who have been working on my cars forever, are renting out the auto body shop and the mechanic shop, so i got to break in a whole new mechanic team. Uh, but I'll, I'll do my own repairs. I go into the, the new... AutoZone, and it's been open about two, three months now, and there's no shopping carts or baskets. 
you know, you're picking up a gallon of antifreeze, five quarts of oil, a filter, you know, maybe some power steering fluid, transmission fluid, or whatever you're buying, uh, wax or whatever. You got nothing to put it in. No basket, no little shopping cart. And you know, the extra guys, then someone's like, oh, well, yeah, we don't have anything. Here's a bucket. You know, like a Home Depot bucket. This one just says AutoZone. They had one. And it had some displays in there. What kind of management goes on for months and months without having anything for the customers to put the oil in, the antifreeze, the filters, that sort of thing? Then you got Rite Aid on Route 37, the first one, not the one down by 166. Uh, they have shopping carts, but the employees are using them. You know, they're using it for stocking the shelves, price changes and all. Rite Aid, that's not what those carts are there for. And I've had this conversation with Rite Aid corporate. They're there for the shoppers, not for the employees. You're going in there, you're buying uh, shampoo, uh, paper towels, water. I get a lot of water and gum and first aid at Rite Aid. you, you got to have the shopping carts. Especially you buy a couple of cases of water, a couple of gallons of water, some soda, whatever. Employees shouldn't have it. So now I got to call Rite Aid again, and this will stop, and I'll call AutoZone, and I'll get baskets over there. Speaking of carts and why I'm, you know, I'm on a big shopping cart issue here. ShopRite on Fisher Boulevard. Um, Shaker ShopRite now, it was uh, Paul Metter for years, and Paul Metter, you know, they decided, the family decided to retire. Um, and they sold the shaker. I have some problems with how Shaker runs that store. And I have some idea how to run a store. I worked for ShopRite as a kid. Um, Paul Metter did a good job running that store. Paul Metter had the quarters on the shopping cart that would force you to bring back the shopping cart to the corral. And it worked. There wasn't carts everywhere. You go to Shaker Shop right now in Fisher, there's carts on the island, there's carts in parking spots, there's carts at the end of the lot. You know, again, it's lazy people who won't bring the cart back to the cart corral. I got two bad knees that need to be replaced. We were talking about replacing them. Then COVID hits. We couldn't get a, you know, a surgeries done. Now I'm going to probably wait till the end of the summer. Eventually, I got to get it done. I bring the cart back to the cart corral on two bad knees. Everybody should. But why Shaker decided to get away from the quarters, a system that worked, is beyond me. But Shaker is something, I've got to actually have a real interview with them. Jersey Mike's on Fisher Boulevard. Anytime I can promote a business in Tom's River, I do. They make a great sandwich. They are quick. They're, they're, they're quick as Blimpy Base on Central Avenue in Jersey City. Good sandwich. And the thing that impresses me most is the happiest employees I've ever come across. They are happy, happy to serve me. They, you know, it's almost scary how happy, happy they are to take care of you. They want to make sure you're satisfied. Did you put your phone number in for your points? Is there anything else we can do for you? Are you satisfied today? Whoever's training these people and hiring them, you do a great job. Jersey Mike's on Fisher Boulevard. Good sandwich, good personnel, good retail etiquette. Yeah, you can't ask for more. All right, you can't ask for more because I'm out of show. You'll be good, you'll be safe. Don't forget, vote. I know it's a primary, but you want good candidates to vote for in November. I'm Pat O'Melia. I'll talk to you next week. Good night.